Welcome to a Starter and a Chaser podcast with your hosts, Joe Clark and John Passo. Can we talk about the big elephant in the room? Like, seriously, why is it pink? What are its hopes and aspirations? Interesting. Does he even like it in here? Should we move it to the garage? Huh, what do we feed it with? I wonder if it's even hungry. Oh, hey, welcome to another episode of a Starter and a Chaser podcast, (laughs) where every week we review one whiskey and one beer. I am professional brewer John Passo. I'm whiskey connoisseur Joe Clark. And for the starter, what do we have? We have Four Roses, limited edition, small batch, barrel strength, 2017. 2017. And for the chaser, we have Max Went to Prague by Chagrin Falls Brewing Company's Crooked Crooked Packer. Packer. Nice. All right, Four Roads is small batch. Uh, it's a 2017 edition. It is a small batch bourbon. So it is a mixture of 15 year, 13 year, and a 12 year bourbon. 13,800 hand numbered bottles were made and uh, are distributed. 75% corn, 20% rye, 5% malted barley, 108 proof. So there was some confusion about who started uh, Four Roses. Was it um, Rufus Matthewson Rose? Uh, Rufus. Was it Paul, like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Jones Jr., 1860, 1888? A little confusion there. It's now owned by um, Krin Brewing, K-R-I-N-N Brewing, and that is a Japanese company. And at one point, in 1943, Seagram's had bought Four Roses. And there is talk in the bourbon industry about that's maybe a time where they kind of nosedived or maybe it went up. I don't know. You guys tell us because you're doing research upon it. Um, That's pretty much what I came up with. Some of the people say during that time of Seagram's, they didn't like it. It wasn't very good. And Mm -hmm. the Japanese company of Crin kind of came in and revived the company. And we have these awesome offerings that we have sitting right here. Yeah, so let's let's dive right into this Four Roses here. That is distilled in their Lawrenceburg, Kentucky distillery. Yeah. Let's take a nose on it, or let's take a look at it. Yeah. I'll hold it up. A little bit of a lighter color, John, for being a uh, you know, max of a blend of 15 year, 13 year, and 12 year. Zero legs. Very thick. Yeah. And this room is just full of the nose on this. What was that? Wow. 100, 108 proof? 108 proof. 108 proof. 54% ABV. What are you picking up? Stone Fruit King right here, Ooh. guys. Heavily concentrated. A lot of caramel. Oh man, it's just straight stone fruits, John. Hmm. You do pick up a little bit of the rye in the background on that one. Interesting. Yeah, so it's 20% rye, so a little higher rye of the bourbon, you know. Yeah. A lot of the corn note. Definitely barrel characteristic. This is a complex one, buddy. Let's let's dive right in and see what we got right, right here. Frost. Hmm. Smooth. Wow. Smooth. Oh my God! Wow, that front end is mm. like Joe saying, smooth and creamy and velvety. Spice at the front teeth there. Uh, I'm getting on the front of the tongue for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Um, Hmm. Oh, now I'm getting the Kentucky hug. Wow, yeah, slow, that was like slow. slow. Like, just like, like a molasses yeah, just, just slowly <laughs> going down your chest. You know? This is thick and viscous. Ooh. Oh, wow. I could nose this forever. I could drink this until I... No, I couldn't do Super it forever, concentrated. Dark fruit, man. Dark fruit. Absolutely. Fig. Caramel. Fig. Barrel. Mm. Barrel's on the back end for me. Wow, I haven't even taken my second sip yet. This is incredible. Yeah, he hasn't. I, I did. Um, upon my second sip, kind of a transformer. When I was getting barrel notes on the back end, kind of starting with the barrel for me, um, the little bit of spice I was getting up front is now gone. It's super smooth on the second one, which is no alcohol burn on this whatsoever. Even on the nose, there's not a lot of burn to it. Um, Mid palate, I'm pulling actually more of a brown sugary note along with that caramel. Okay. And then on the back, I'm kind of finish, finishing again with the dark fruits and barrel characteristics. It kind of flows right through on this one. 
What are you picking up? Now on my third, you're right, I get a little bit more of that barrel characteristic that comes to the forefront, but it then starts mixing in with brown sugar, molasses, caramel, moves into spice fairly quickly. Yeah, the rye that. really. The rye spice is coming start out. Start coming out. The third a lot step. More. Yeah. You, I agree. And I'm yeah. on the third, actually. Yeah, that's, yeah, um, that's why I, yeah, I just did. Yeah. And then the molasses comes back in and showcases the fig and dark fruit. And I'm left in the aftertaste. This very long finish, supple, sides of the tongue Slow all drop the way. down and the really, chest. Yeah, it's it weird, it's man. Like, each mm, sip, like you feel mm, each sip going down. Yeah. I wonder what Uncle Lou would think of this. I mean, he is a drinking champion with his yeah, trophy he's here. Got his so trophy you can there. bring him up yeah. there. <laughs> Good old Uncle Lou. I mean, he they, says cheers, guys. He does say cheers. <laughs> um, God, that is just that is that's incredible. Yeah. That I've, I've heard rumors that this one was yeah. something special. Uh, Concentrated flavors. Absolutely. Um, you know, talking here and letting the third sip kind of sit in, mm -hmm. that Kentucky hug is getting a hold of me right now. See, it's not I'm for me. I'm feeling it right I, here. I get it. I get it just in like the center. And like mm. Joe was saying, it you know slowly moves down. But I'm not getting it radiating. I'm not getting like a real tightness. It's just there. It's just like... Hey, I'm gonna hang out. How you doing? Yeah, you know, I'm getting it. Cool. <laughs> so, shall we uh, take a quick break and we return will. with the chaser? Absolutely. All right, we'll be right back. See you guys in a, probably a flash. And we are back with the, the chaser, chaser, which is from Crooked Pecker Brewing Company in Chagrin Falls. This is their Max went to Prague. Now, uh, Crooked Pecker was started in 2019 by uh, the Stewart family. So it's a completely family owned and operated brewery, which is something we love. Yes. Um, now, they kind of specialize in New England IPAs slash, okay. AKA hazy IPAs. Okay. And that is, that's what this one is. This is our first hazy IPA on the show. And this is the Joe's first, first crooked pecker. First crooked pecker. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <All right>. yeah. <laughs> uh, and um, so this is a, a hazy IPA. It's 6.8% ABV and it's brewed with uh, mosaic and citra hops. And also my favorite base malt, Maris Otter. Uh, Maris Otter is an English malt, tends to have a little bit more of a, a caramely, bready, just fuller flavor than the traditional two-row malt that they use for beer. So let's this is cool for me because it's almost like uh, Tom's Fullery Distillery is out where I live, and now these guys are out where I live too. So awesome! Let's try this out. Look at this guy's making a mess. Yeah, I'm Look making a mess guy. already. You can't guy. take me anywhere. Jeez! <laughs> wow, that hazy IPA means hazy, hazy. So typically, to, if you're gonna make a hazy IPA, it's an interaction of the hops, the yeast, and the grains that. that lend to that hazy note. But some companies will shortcut that and um, they'll put flour in there. And it, oh, really? You know, yeah, so uh, I don't believe they, they do that. I think they're more of the Traditional, traditional style true okay uh, and it's a it's a newer style uh, it's been around for like now is this like an years, unfiltered kind of deal it's or? unfiltered and okay. then also you know oh, wow it's yeast that doesn't flocculate out it doesn't drop out so there's some yeast in there uh also they emphasize aromatic hops which is, oh my know, gosh yeah instead of the bittering like, hop so, coming out in the room like this four roses yeah. It's all late edition hops wow, for the most part, so you don't get that super bitter note that you traditionally get in the IPA. Look how, so I always thought, you know, John, me being the like kind of stout connoisseur now mm -hmm. because of him, um, this is like the light version of a stout where no light <laughs> penetrates through no. this light color, which is interesting to me. I didn't think, you know, seeing pictures of this and stuff on the internet, even pictures of, of friends drinking a Crooked Pecker, I thought it would be like you'd see through it, but I had a hazy note to it. Like you, yeah, no, light does is, not pass through this yeah. like a stout. Very cool. So what are you smelling? Very citrusy, very grapefruit forward, orange, a lot of hops. A lot of hops on this being, I'm guessing, IPA. IPA. Mm -hmm. 
And okay. typically your hazy IPAs will be juicy, they say. So it's like oh, that, yeah. that orange juice, yeah, that orange juice. Yeah, for up. sure. All right, man. Let's dive Here in. we go. Prost, as Prost. he says. Prost. Orange juice. <laughs> it's just like Ooh. a glass of fucking orange juice. It is. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. It is thick. Thick. But it's not sludgy like a lot of the hazies that I, mm, okay. I have had before. Right. You know, I'm, I'm not a huge hazy fan, but being a beer judge, I can I know what hazy should taste like, what good hazies taste like. You know, it's just not my style. Okay. Um, and a lot of them that I've come across are sludgy. You know, it's just yeast. It's like cracking open the bottom of the fermenter and drinking the yeast out of it. Oh, wow. You know, okay. It's, it's sludgy. Okay. And a, a good hazy IPA shouldn't be like that. And this is good. It is not super yeasty. It has a awesome. yeast note. But, yeah, it does. It does, for sure. Um, those hops come forefront. I get a lot of great fruit on the finish, but that orange juice note is just straight through. And by the way, this was donated to us by um, Scott. Uh, Stuart, one of the uh, owners of Crooked Pecker, awesome. I picked this up. Thank you, Scott. Two days ago, right after they released it, so this was got like a, super fresh. Um, uh, almost like a uh, the feel on the tongue in when you drink it, it's like a milky feel, kind of like drinking milk, almost like that kind of. Kinda, uh, yeah, I could see weight that. to it. You, yeah, it's you know got what I'm some, saying? Okay, some thickness, some. Hat. Yeah, yeah, it does, it does. But it's like he says, it's not chunky. It's not. It's not weird in any way. Cause I've never, this is my first introduction into hazy. I'm not a huge IPA guy in general. We're working but on these, uh, He is, he is. There's, there's <laughs> been some good, you guys have seen in the past. Yeah. Uh, you can see some previous episodes on our list there. But this is interesting, man. It's, I, I kind of want to work on this a little bit, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, for being okay. a Maris Otter based grain for this beer, it, it does lend some to that mouthfeel, but I, it's hard for me to struggle to pick that up in this. I mean, really the feature of this is that orange juice note that you're getting. I'm getting, getting you, you do get orange juice, but um, as this finishes, it is heavy grapefruit for me. I get heavy grapefruit on this. Um, and I like grapefruit. I mm -hmm. used to do that thing, you know, when we were kids and stuff like that. My parents would have the grapefruit. The 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 grape uh, no, uh, we uh, chop it. Different <laughs> <chocolate>. <laughs> it's different, different experience. <laughs> we chop it in half and you like kind of like sprinkle a little sugar on it and just yeah. eat the grapefruit yeah. out of the spoon. <laughs> is that what you're getting? This has yeah. got that flavor to it. So it's almost kind of like a reminiscent thing for me. Nice. Very it's, cool. It's very yeah. comforting and homely. Yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes, yes. Nice. Yes. Perfect. Well, you know, um, being not a fan of hazy IPAs, I definitely will say that um, professionally, categorically, this is like on spot. This is a great cool. hazy form okay. style. And for my own palate, I like it because it's not that typical sludgy New England IPA, you Good. know, it, it yeah. doesn't have that massive yeast note. So, so you would like, say if you were to do something like this, this would be your perfection. And this would be my perfection. Awesome. That that's very high. Yeah. Of <laughs> so what do you think? What have we drank today? Bringing it back. We drank. What are we doing? On this episode, we drank the 2017 Four Roses Small Bash Barrel Proof. Look at that thing, man. Man, that was that was absolutely mind-blowingly good. I, I can't get over how complex and thick and rich and just enjoyable from start to finish. Dark that fruit that was. bomb with like that hint of rye. I'm gonna mirror what he said. It's it's a beautiful drink. It's I get why it has the uh, accolades that it does have. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's awesome um there's my review so. and if you agree with us or disagree with us put a comment in the uh comments below on youtube uh hit the subscribe button if you can that really helps us out uh we also have a patreon account that you can join for special content but skipping forward to crooked pecker what do you think joe i'm Your not a big IPA, ipa guy i'm not yes. i'm just it's just some of them I like, some of them I don't like, um, but bringing me back to that memory of eating that grapefruit 
with the spoon with a little mm -hmm. sugar douse on top. I know a lot of people have done that before. Comment down below if you have that in your family. Um, I dig it. You I dig, dig it? it? I dig it. I dig <laughs> All it. All right. And for me, you know, while I am a huge hop head, I am not a hazy guy. I, I'm not a haze bro. Uh, so that being said, I recognize good ones. And this is a killer, fresh, uber tasty New England style IPA. He's a tough guy to impress with beer, so. Yeah, well, yeah, he yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, standards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Crooked Pecker, thank you very much for the donation. We're going to be featuring them a little bit more on our Instagram page as well as we got some other beers donated from them. So, if you can look us up at a Starter and a Chaser podcast on Instagram, you could see some of those posts. But that is today's episode. Also, if you're a busy person, you're traveling, you're driving around in your car, you can listen to us too. You don't have to just watch us. We are on Google Podcasts, mm -hmm. Apple Podcasts, Breaker, uh, all the popular platforms, Spotify. Uh, take a listen to us. Yeah. I do it myself. That's kind of weird, but whatever. Well, you know, <laughs> you, you know, we, 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 can, we criticize we can ourselves. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's criticizing. Guys, we'll see you next Wednesday <laughs> and every other Monday as much as we can yeah, as much a special as can. episodes watch out for those and our patron users <laughs> thank you thank you very much patron users but let's get back to that pink elephant in the room you know uh I, why isn't it blue i don't know but i already wrangled him up and put him in a garage so. oh shit we should go feed him yeah let's go